Jocks Doucette along with us. JD, what's happening, my man? Blake, good to be with you tonight. I don't know if I can match your energy with this plethora of topics that you're hitting on this evening, but I will do my very best. Thanks for uh, thanks for having me on. Well, I love the vocabulary words, JD. You know, we just used plethora earlier. My mom was an English language arts teacher at Franklinton, and so she loves when we use these big words. But I appreciate you having me on, my friend, or having well, can- or you coming on, my friend. Yeah, well, I can tell you, uh, anytime I said anything grammatically incorrect, my mom was the first person that after the show said, you know, you said, blah, 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 you know, the real word. Is. So anyway, I know how that goes. <laughs> yes, indeed. J- J.D., I just want to go here first. You you broke some pretty big news today. A lot of LSU fans are very excited. You're in the podcast game now. You're like <laughs> us. You're in the podcast game. Uh, right off the top, because we've had a lot of people asking about it, just tell everybody what you guys are doing and, and when y'all are going to be getting that launched? Well, Blake, I think uh, during the pandemic, when we had no sports going on, I did my very best to kind of reach out to former LSU athletes and people that I covered over the years to kind of chat with them about things and uh, do interviews, long format interviews. And as you know, in a format like this, it's much different than uh, being on a sports cast for three and a half to seven minutes. Uh, where you've got to kind of rush and get as much information on the air as you can. So the the great thing about the internet is is that you can be as long as you want to, uh, basically. And so uh, I've done a lot of interviews that we've just uh, attached to the web, but now we're going to, quote, unquote, have a podcast. And so uh, I think next Wednesday uh, I'm going to do a podcast. We'll we'll put one out every Wednesday moving forward. Just call it Jacques Talk, my name talk, and then – I'll try to talk to uh, as many former LSU athletes as I can and, uh, and current people and, and also kind of integrate my love of music and uh, pop culture to kind of broaden the horizons. It'll be more than just sports. So uh, we'll start that next week. That sounds awesome. Look, J.D., the, the simple fact, like when we were going through the pandemic and you were doing that, that's one thing that I like really look forward to. And I know a lot of LSU fans look forward to that because there wasn't a lot going on and we got to see what those guys were going on. You know, we had Brayden Fajoko. Uh, on a couple of weeks ago, and he talked about, hey, this is something I've never dealt with and no one has, but this season was the, the, more chaotic than me than anything that I've ever done, and, and I love that you're going to be doing that. That's going to be awesome. Yeah, Blake, uh, you know, this past year, um, you know, I, I'll make 20 years at WAFB next March, and um, I certainly will never forget this. You know, I, I don't want to – I think what, what this year has taught us to be thankful for what we have, but at the same time, we're saying, I want things back to the way they used to be. You know, you're kind of fighting that, that internal battle. But to cover the team this year and to cover sports and to be in a Superdome when there's nobody there um, and no fans at any of these LSU games for the most part, uh, I made all these road trips, and every road trip I'd make, they'd be like, man, LSU's in town. We should have so many people here. We should be excited, and it's just dead. So it was uh, – it was a bit depressing, and I've talked about the day that LSU played Alabama. We drove right down Nicholson Drive. We didn't hit tap the brakes once. There were no people who could have fired a shotgun and not hit a soul. So that's not what sports is supposed to be. So hopefully this year we can get back to uh, some semblance of normalcy. Absolutely. J.D., you, you were at a game today. It was freezing cold. It was wet. LSU softball did run rule them. But, I mean, was that one of the crazier games that you've ever – I don't want to say crazier games you've been to, but – Weather-wise, I mean, it's got to be just horrendous to be out there today, and and luckily they run ruled them. Yeah, Blake, I know about you, but I, I mean, I like the spring sports. I love to go out there. I love to go to a ballpark when it's 70, 75, and the right. sun's out, you know, and people are, uh, you know, got the flip-flops on and enjoying a cold one or whatever. But, uh, man, this February stuff sometimes for the birds. It's really tough. And, and, and this year especially – I think on opening night for LSU softball, it was like 35, 36. Friday night, about 35 degrees. They're right there on the Mississippi River. Wind is just gusting in. And today, yeah, it was like 32 when they started. So um, I, I, I say we kind of, we have to earn those beautiful spring days. And we definitely have to earn it this year. But I, I give uh, I give LSU baseball props, Blake, the fact that uh, they were proactive on this thing. Hey, if we, don't, if we don't have to be miserable, let's not be miserable on Friday night. Let's play in the heat of the day, Saturday, Sunday, and uh, and rearrange some things. So, uh, but yeah, and it's funny, Blake. You know, you go out there and you shoot your own highlights sometimes, like I did today. I left. I felt pretty good. It was four nothing. Sure enough, they scored fifteen runs on the fifth inning. All the home runs that I had left. I I, 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 I sent uh, uh, an email to Beth Tarina afterwards, like, really, you had to score fifteen runs after a look. <laughs> 
he's like, who knew? You know, who knew? So you, you never can't predict what's going to happen. That's amazing. And I love, look, I love that they were out there doing it. It was, it, it's fun to watch. Uh, and, and this is you're talking about baseball, JD, like you were just mentioned, Blaine Smith in the comments says, hashtag ask jocks, any news on the baseball front this weekend? I know that there's been some rescheduling and some things going on, but like you talked about, let's not be miserable. What's one extra day where the season got cut short last year. Um, but what can you tell us there and, and tell the fans and how excited are you for this baseball season after it got cut short last season? Yeah, you know, Blake, it's funny. Across the country, I think something like 89, 90% of college baseball teams draw like 300 fans or less, you know. And uh, here in Baton Rouge, it never really gets boring, does it? Um, and uh, this year, we're going to have to start with 2,500 fans. And hopefully, uh, you know, Scott Woodward has told us he, he wants more fans in there. And hopefully, LSU has a great year. And then when they're hosting a regional in June, maybe we can get six, seven, seven, uh, 8,000 people in there. But, you know, yeah. Um, it's a team that's loaded with pitching. Uh, Jaden Hill really is a fantastic, uh, remarkable story. The fact, I think the guy, Blake, has won one game in his career, and he is on every All-American preseason uh, team you can find. And, uh, and not, I mean, I'm not saying he doesn't deserve it, but it's just really interesting. He's never pitched in an SEC game either. Um, and so I can just tell you, covering the team last year, I think the last game I went to, Blake, was uh, – LSU got no hit on a Sunday in Houston, Texas by Oklahoma. And, uh, you know, I, I saw them play, what, 20, 21 games last year. The pitching was really good. The hitting was very spotty. So, and a lot of those guys that were spotty hitters are, are back this year. So, we'll see how they do. Uh, but certainly, they're very excited about uh, a, a couple of the true freshmen. And the pitching, really, you know, Devin Fontenot, um, I was there that night, that super regional when they played. Florida State, and, and and he just gutted out those innings, and I just I felt bad he couldn't win, but it wasn't his fault they didn't win. They just couldn't score any runs. But uh, a lot of pitching, and uh, I look forward to, uh, to being at the box, and it'll be 70 degrees on Sunday, if you can believe it, so we're getting out of the square. <laughs> yeah, if, uh, if, 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 you know, the old saying about Louisiana weather, if you don't like it now, just stay a couple of days because it's definitely going to change, right? Uh, J.D., exactly. you mentioned earlier that you've been at WAFB for almost 20 years. Talking about Jaden Hill, have you ever seen a guy in any sport have so much, and I don't want to say hype, because you said, like you said, he's on all these preseason All-Americans, but hasn't ever really played, and this he's technically going into his third year. Do you ever remember covering a guy that everybody sees the talent, but we haven't really seen him play, and everybody thinks he could be a top five pick in the MLB draft? Yeah, Blake, it's really interesting. You know, I remember – you know, probably one of the best athletes I've ever covered is Chad Jones, right? I mean, right. football field, amazing player. And then I just remember on a Sunday, they were playing Tennessee, I think. And I, I remember Paul Maneri saying, you know, I just looked up and said, please, God, because he was putting Chad Jones in a big game to pitch. Like, right. oh, here we go, roll the dice. And I think he was just wicked, you know, curveballs breaking, you know, 12 to 6. And he strikes out like two or three guys and from a packed house at Ellen Box and Certainly, he was a guy that, you know, was a, was an amazing athlete. I think Bregman, Alex Bregman, for sure, you could feel the buildup, and you would hear this guy is at the box like at midnight taking ground balls when everyone's gone home, and you heard stuff like that. But, yeah, I think, uh, you know, Jaden Hill, you just look at him. You can just tell he is just a physical guy. You know, he could be playing football right. if he wanted to probably, and, uh, and certainly his first year he had some arm trouble. They shut him down last year, the pandemic. So, uh, so certainly looking forward to him. AJ Labus is a great pitcher. Uh, more so, has played some uh, pitched some outstanding ball. You got like a guy like Matthew Beck, who's been there, who talks about man, 2017. We're in Omaha. I got to watch Florida dog pile. I haven't forgotten about that since it happened. You know, so um, a good blend of, of different uh, players, and looking forward to it. Mike Scarborough from TigerBait.com says hashtag Ask Jocks. Who's the better drummer, Alex Van Haler or Tommy Lee? Well, we certainly know that Tommy Lee is a much uh, bigger, louder personality, right? And uh, certainly, uh, I think Alex Van Halen's been divorced like four times. Uh, Tommy <laughs> Lee, maybe a couple times. Uh, you know, certainly some very famous tapes by Tommy Lee and the people he's been uh, linked to over the years. But uh, very much so. I will give it to Tommy, you know, for people like me who are getting older, who remember the late 80s, Tommy Lee's revolving uh, drum kit uh, on Wild Side and everything. That was uh, that was pretty cool. That was that was revolutionary at the time. <laughs> yes, I had to get to that question. I've been holding it for a couple of minutes. I've been kind of itching to ask that because Mike 
had been wanting to ask that. Uh, JD, something interesting. You talked about Bregman. Now we've had we have Zach Pearson, former LSU pitcher Zach Pearson, that joins us every Thursday, and he said kind of like your Bregman story that. Alex would send a text out and say, hey, who wants to bring me to the field to field gr- or hit me ground balls? Like the work that that kid put in was crazy. And you hear stuff like what you hear with Jaden Hill, uh, another guy that's been really kind of out there that a lot of people are interested to see and have has had some uh, people calling him maybe a Mike Trout type of clone is Dylan Cruz. Is that the kind of guy you're, you're – ma- does he have that Bregman persona that everybody's wanting to see too? Well, Blake, I think uh, Paul Maneri said he's got two guys that he's got no problem that are freshmen putting him into tough situations in the batting lineup and just let him go. And that's uh, uh, Dylan Cruz and Trey Morgan, uh, you know, the first baseman there. So he's going to put him in some tough spots. I don't know where he's going to bat him four or five or, or whatever. But, uh, you know, it's really interesting, man. You, you can go out, you can watch fall, you can watch fall ball, then you can watch the practices in the spring. But you never really know until you put them on the field. And right. Coach Canary will tell you that, too. You know, Now, it won't be nine, ten thousand 10,000 people there for opening night. It'll be 2,500. So maybe that'll – maybe the nerves won't be as high. But uh, I'm not going to name names, but we've had people over the years that have appeared on magazine covers or whatever before they played, and they didn't do too well, and they transferred or whatever. I'm not wishing that upon anybody. But it's <laughs> it really is a, it's a tough place to play. You know, you don't have the media coverage – Anywhere else that you do in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and, and Louisiana for LSU baseball. Maneri talks about that. It's a recruiting tool. You come here, you're going to get a lot of coverage. The other side of that is if you can't, you know, if you go through a slump, how do you bounce back? I'm really interested to in watch this baseball team. I mean, we haven't seen them in, in, in quite a long time, so it's going to be fun to watch. J.D., yeah. we were talking a little football before, before you came on. And, look, LSU struggled last year. Everybody knows they went 5-5. Five and five. A lot of guys opted out and a lot of guys left from that 2019 team. But we've been doing this whole thing where we go through the depth chart. And tonight was the big, bigger night. Last year, they had a lot of younger guys. You had true freshmen that were starting at quarterback, true freshmen that were starting at wide receiver. JD, am I going crazy here? But now that I look up and look at the depth chart, there's a lot of guys that saw a lot of playing time last year. And LSU looks to have a lot of depth. Could this be a year that LSU kind of just gets back out there, gets back up on the map, and because they have so many guys and they're so deep all across the board this upcoming season? Yeah, well, Mike Scarborough, he and I had a chat the other day, and he said he felt like at minimum LSU could go nine and three this year. Wow. Yeah, right. And, uh, and you look at last year, last year stunk for a lot of different reasons, but – some people say they don't they don't like the rental wins. They want to get rid of the win win rent a wins. And, and I would agree the week that LSU plays a rental win, I tell myself, you know, this week's game is not going to be very exciting. It's not going to have a lot of hype. But I do think that they play a role at times. When you go to Texas in 2019 and play this down to the wire game in a hundred degree heat, I don't mind playing Northwestern State the next week to heal some guys up after a big game and get an easy victory. And certainly, you know, if LSU plays their schedule that they were supposed to. You know, maybe they go eight and five instead of this five and five, and we're and we look at things differently. Now, eight and five still is not acceptable, but you know, I, I agree with you. I mean, before I came on with you, I just I glanced at the at the roster a little bit. I like the fact that they'll have a Neil Farrell, a Glenn Logan coming back, veteran guys on the defensive line. Jaquelin Roy from U High made some plays late in the year. I think that guy's going to be a beast. Ali Gay certainly was a consistent performer on a defense that was pretty bad, right? Andre Anthony, not only a good dresser, Andre Anthony, coming down the the, the hill, but also uh, a playmaker. And I thought it was interesting, man, that last game against Ole Miss, Trey Bradford and Josh Williams got a lot of action in in, in the backfield. I don't know if they were kind of kicking uh, John Emery in the butt and some of these other guys, hey, we need more consistency out of the running game. I like all those guys. Uh, Chris Curry, hard runner, just wasn't getting a whole lot of yards. He transfers. You know, Tyree Davis Price had seven touchdowns on the national championship team, including a huge one against Florida that ended up being the game winning score. But just the running game just wasn't consistent. And Kevin Falk is one of my favorite people in the world, been a great guy to me for over 20 years. And I never want to be critical of Kevin Falk, but certainly I think last year some of the running back rotation was a little bit out of whack. You know, uh, uh, Tyree Davis Price, four big runs, they score a touchdown, then he's out the next drive. You know, I think they maybe need to, need to look at that and do a better job. But yeah, I think. You know, you look at the schedule, Blake. I think you got to win the McNeese, Central Michigan, ULM. Those are three victories. UCLA, you got to win that game. So that puts you at four wins. And you got the conference games, you know, eight conference games. And and 
I, I really can't look at one game in the conference and say, well, LSU is definitely just going to walk in and win. They're not good enough to do that. But I think if they play to their level, I think 10-2 and two or 9-3 and three is certainly a possibility. They're not going to be favored at Alabama, obviously. Uh, and, and they got, you know, some other Texas A&M regular season finale. Uh, I don't have a good grasp on how, any, how good anyone's going to be. I am looking forward to spring football, though, if we get to go out there. That was a question that someone asked, and, and Mark, and I know that you guys and a lot of media have not been able to go out there. But talking about the new coaching staff, Durante Jones comes from Minnesota. He's been on a lot of stops. A lot of people are high on him. Derek Stingley Sr., had some huge comments about him on with Jordy Collada. You look at Jake Peets. You know, I, I saw TJ Finley this past weekend as we live here in Hammond, and that kid looks fantastic from when I saw him at Ponchatoula. He looks fantastic, great. Look, just yeah. really committed to his body. How do you like the, these coaching hires? It seems like they have a great infusion of youth, guys that are really energetic. That's going to go a, a long way with these players too, and and that goes to a part uh, of us thinking and seeing that they could possibly have nine or ten wins, right? Yeah, I I was impressed with the press conferences. I thought each guy did a good job representing himself. I think that uh, you know, look, it, it's we heard it. LSU staff is too old and too white. We heard that a lot, you know. And so if you glance at it now, I'm not saying saying you need to hire people just because they're a certain color, but they have definitely made an effort to be more di diverse on the coaching staff if you take a look at it. And Durante Jones, defensive coordinator, I think that, uh, you know, certainly uh, he's – he really – I mean, you could say he was a coordinator, but that was 11 years ago at some place called Bowie State. So, um, on one end, if LSU goes out and they struggle, you're going to be getting comments and I'm going to be getting comments that how could Coach O at such a critical juncture – hire two guys who had never really been coordinators before, right? You know, Jake Peets has never been a coordinator before. I think the guy's brilliant. I think he's real smart from what I can see. I love this comment about I got six kids, and if we can manage bath time, then we can handle fourth and one. I love that. <laughs> right. I do too. So I, I think and I think that I think the pandemic helps too. Ain't nothing to do. Can't go to a concert, can't go to a party. You're not supposed to anyway. Uh, you know, new movies are coming out. They should just spend time with each other, get to know each other better, work on that team chemistry, work on that uh, that love for each other with these new coaches. And I think Jake Pete said it too. If um, I want these guys coming to my house, if I can't have them at my house, then they're not family. So I think that they're really going to work hard on that. I think I don't have anything against Bo Pulini. I just think that his hard his his hard nosed ways just did not connect with the team. There was, you know, there was that racial, all, all the racial strife in the summer and all that that apparently just wasn't managed quite the way it should have been. I think Coach O just wants to put a whistle around his neck and coach football. You know, he, he doesn't want to get, get into politics and all that stuff. But I think he was kind of pushed into that. I think he learned from it. I think everyone learned. So hopefully, you know, I like the coaches. Uh, I, I think that uh, Andre Carter is a great defensive line uh, presence there, played 13 years in the league. Guys will listen. Devon Gottschall with the Dolphins uh, played for him, likes him a lot. Um, and so uh, and I think DJ Mangus is, is a really bright young guy. I text Joe Burrow's dad and said, hey, can you get a, a comment from Joe on this? And he said, uh, Joe said he's great. He's another Joe Brady in the making or something like that. So uh, how about that? Joe Brady was getting coffee, Blake, like at the Saints, like two years ago, three years ago. He's a gopher. And now he's interviewing for NFL coaching jobs and he's got his own coaching tree. It's unreal. Yeah. <laughs> JD, the funniest story I've ever heard was from uh, oh my gosh, Mike Detillier, who came on a couple of months ago, and he said, "Hey, we were walking out to practice, and uh, Joe Brady was bringing Sean Payton Popeyes." <laughs> I mean, like, <laughs> you know, like that was that was funny to me. And that then he's going to three years later, he's at the Atlanta Falcons facility, uh, going for a head coaching job. That's just. Crazy to me. JD, last question. We'll get you out of here. Thank you for coming on. This has been fantastic. Uh, no problem. Having fun. And by the way, I remember like when they asked Sean Payton about Joe Brady, like to give a sound bite. We were at Saints camp or something. They're like, uh, hey, uh, Joe Brady's going there. And he's like, well, he's a guy who we would occasionally maybe talk to about. I mean, it was not like, you know, oh, yeah, right. This 27, 28 year old guy is going to revolutionize LSU football. Yeah, right. Well, <laughs> It was, uh, you know, I don't know who it, – it's a team effort. Everyone gets credit. But, wow, you know, 2019. We'll never forget it. 
I've had my fair share of words for Sean Payton and the pettiness, but I'll leave <laughs> I'll leave that one for another day. JD, yeah. you've been covering high school football for a long time. I remember, you know, when I was playing football at Franklinton with the Taylor brothers, we'd always go over and we would watch and see what everybody else is doing. We had Holy Cross in our district uh, that year, and it came down to the final the final game, and we were playing them. Do you ever remember? A time, and I know that COVID's really hurt high school football, but do you remember a time where where Louisiana as a whole has seen so much talent in high school football everywhere? You look at, you know, just recruiting for this upcoming year, they have, what, 20 offers that LSU's given out to Louisiana guys. When you go and watch these games and you see these kids, have, do you remember a year that was just as talented as this one? Or is this might be, this could this one be the, the more talented years we've ever seen? Yeah, I mean, it's going to be stacked, and Scarborough can tell you all about that. I remember one year, one of our award done banquets uh, for our high school player of the year, which you got to be a senior to be a finalist, nine finals. I think we had one year, I think we had Jarvis Landry. I think we had Landon Collins. I think we had Kenny Hilliard, uh, Terrence McGee. I think from your neck of the woods won the award that year. I think we had four or five guys. Not to interrupt you, but scoring 50 touchdowns, I hope he won that award playing quarterback. Anyway, go ahead, J.D. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he was a quarterback. For those who forgot, you know, Terrence McGee was the quarterback of that of that state championship team. And, uh, you know, I, I remember that year specifically, which is so much talent. Uh, you know, Devontae Smith was a was a finalist. You know, we do so many of these that I, I sometimes it, it gets blurry, you forget. But, uh, yeah, looking for – I mean – you know, Patrick Queen over the years, uh, an outstanding running back. Um, you know, Jarvis was was playing like as an eighth grader, you know, like a thousand yards. Nick Brosette ran for a thousand yards when he was in the eighth grade. You know, Kenny Hilliard, you know, Kenny Hilliard when he was a junior ran for like twenty seven hundred yards. I mean, he was just and then his senior year, he had like a he'd run on like half a leg, you know, he was like hurt. Right. Runs for 2,500 yards. I mean, we have covered in this state, you know, some unbelievable talent. Now, Mike will tell you, though, you know, the last, I don't know, decade, we've had Lael Collins and uh, Cam Robinson, I think, have been the only, like, big-time offensive tackles, you know. So we have not done a great job of breeding offensive linemen. Um, you know, at Whitworth, that goes all the way back to, you know, 2000. Maybe. Yeah, <laughs> 20 years ago. Right. So, uh, so yeah, looking forward to this year. And and look, I love Louisiana guys, but you can't just say, "Well, just got to recruit all guys from Louisiana. We'll be good." You know, it, it doesn't quite work that way. You know, they got to go out of state and get some guys to fill to fill some spots. So, I'm looking forward to it, man. You know, sports line. I, I, I'll leave you with this. You know, Steve Schneider sport, started sports line in 1990, 30 years ago, and back in the day, the only they went to two high school games a week, like whoever you high was playing and then whatever game was at Memorial Stadium. And Steve Schneider was smart enough to say, let's go to Kentwood. Let's go to Santa Mall. Let's go to, you know, all these different places, Franklinton, uh, you know, and cover these games. And, and uh, you know, we get to cover LSU. We get to cover the Saints. We get to cover Southern. But the thing that people stop us and talk to us the most about, I love that high school football show you guys do. And so uh, that's how you connect with people, show them stuff that they can't watch on ESPN. So and, yeah, and look, I could I could just speak for me. I mean, look, when we had a meet in our district, okay, and they had all those great teams, I'm like, man, I please, please, Jesus, I hope they don't win because it wasn't acceptable through the phone. Hey, I I don't know if Amy won. You know, people aren't going to text me back immediately to find out, and that's how that's how we find out. But JD, you've been a rock star. This has been absolutely fantastic. Thank you for coming on, my friend, and tell everybody where they can find all of your stuff and everything that you do. And I know that they know already. But where well, can they find out everything you do? Well, thanks for having me. And I, and I love doing stuff like this. I love talking. You know, I just like to visit with people. And it's so much easier. The pandemic, if there's one positive, it's, it's taught us how to use all this stuff now. So uh, so anyway, at WAFP.com, I'll be on your 10 o'clock news tonight. Uh, and uh, check out my uh, Twitter page, uh, uh, my uh, Jacques Duce WAFP Facebook page. And I'm going to start a uh, gonna start a podcast uh, next Wednesday. And uh, I'm not sure who the first guest will be. I'm I'm putting a lot of pressure on myself, Blake. I got to have a good one to start off here. So we'll see how that goes.